Hey guys, welcome to Retro Peace Theater. So today I'm going to be playing King's Quest 7, which is my second favorite King's Quest game. Uh, King's Quest 6 still tops the list, and if you're new to my channel, um, if you go into my videos, there's a great playthrough my sister did on this channel of King's Quest 6, and I encourage you to go check it out. Um, King's Quest 7 is a little bit different. <clears throat> We're going to see some different graphics. It's a little bit more of a cartoony style, and that kind of got some flack from some hardcore uh, Robert Williams fans, but you know, I, I actually think it's really kind of charming. Um, it's, I believe, the second King's Quest game where we have all female protagonists, and we also have two protagonists in this game that we're going to be playing. So I'm not going to drone on too long, um, but we're going to watch the intro so you can see what's going on with the story, and then we'll get rocking and rolling. Mama's feet when we're dancing. <laughs> All right, I admit Prince Rupert is, well, he's a bit awkward, dear. That's putting it mildly. But speaking of princes, my pretty daughter, it really is time you thought about getting married. Oh, mother! Now, Rosella. You're nearly 20 years old. Most of your friends are already married. Mother, I'm not ready. There are so many things I haven't done yet. I want to have fun. But, Rosella, I happen to know that Prince Throckmorton of Montecor is just mad about you. Prince Throckmorton? Mother, he's so boring. He's not boring, Rosella. He's reliable. And he's so handsome. He has the most beautiful smile, don't you think? And he's so intelligent. How many young men do you know whose hobby is conjugating Latin verbs? And you know you should consider yourself lucky. Every princess in the known world is just dying to marry Prince Throckmorton. You really must strike while the iron is hot, Rosella. That's why I've... Well, I've invited the prince to... Rosella! So that pretty much explains, <laughs> in in some terms, where we're at. Um, so this game is going to kind of just throw us right into it. Uh, we're going to start a new game. 
and we're going to go retro. Okay, retro pie. All right, cool. <clears throat> All right, chapter one. My daughter, Rosella, where are you? Blast! What is this place? Where is my Rosella, my child? Okay, so this is probably one of the easiest interfaces, I think, in the King's Quest series. Uh, basically, if it sparkles when the wand is over it, you can interact with it. And this is a super important feature. We have the eye over here, where we can see a 3D model of what we're dealing with. And we can also use objects on other things, and we can also use them on ourselves. <laughs> now, I'm going to do my best. I don't want to talk over when they talk in this because there's no subtitles. Um, and there's actually two different ways we can complete this level. So, I'm going to show you the... Uh, I'll show you the fast way to do a certain part of it first, and then we'll come back and then we'll do the uh, the longer way. Because the longer way I actually like better um, overall, but um, the fast way, I mean, if I were trying to just speed through this, um, it would be the way I would go. Salt crystals. How odd. So I already have enough to do what I'm talking about. So. Well, let me show you. I'm going to create a save, make a new bookmark, and keep playing. Okay. So you can combine objects, like I can combine that scrap of cloth with the stick, and I get a flag. Okay. And if I do that, and I go over here, we're going to walk for a minute. We have to go in here to get something, um, and there's two ways to get past this particular part. Um, because you come in here, and you have this guy to deal with. So if we use the flag on him, this is the fastest way. And now he's stuck. And then uh, we can come over here and do it. <coughs> what we need to do, um, which I'm not going to do this right now, I'm going to come back to this because I'm going to show you, but that's the fast one. Here is the longer way to do it. Uh, return to old. Okay, so we're here. We're not going to go and deal with the scorpion thing just yet. Uh, in fact, the first thing I'm going to do is um, I want you to take note this statue and this well are super important. Uh, to what we need to do. We're going to go up. And you see these ominous looking, almost bear-like footprints on the ground. Going into here kind of tells us a little bit of where we need to go. Ouch! Blast! I can't reach it! So this is a good example of some of the puzzle solving. Um, if I use the stick, I can knock it down, and then I get a prickly hair. Okay. So now I'm going to come over here. And 
we're going to take a look at this uh, hmm. drawing. This is very important. We need to know this to complete this level. Either way you do it. We have the well. That's what this represents. But then we have these uh, symbols here. And then it looks like a bowl turned down. And then the well is empty. So... We come in here, and there is a box. Isn't that cute? And if we look at the box, we can interact with the box. We can turn it and look at it. And inside, there is a corn kernel. So we'll put that down. Now, I need one of these jars, but it doesn't matter which order I click on them in. Three of them will break before I can pick one up. And I do a different order every time I play this, just to make sure I'm right, but it's always been that way, so. <clears throat> I'm getting awfully tired of this. Okay. We're gonna take the corn kernel and we're gonna plant it where this water is dripping down over here. And just like oh, that... Oh, my! What's funny is that's not far off from how oh, fast corn actually beauty. grows. So we have an ear of corn. Um, I'm from the Midwest, where corn is probably one of the most common crops we have. Um, and uh, there's a saying called, uh, knee high by the 4th of July. Uh, I mean, that's how tall you want your corn for a good crop. Um, this is important to well, That gourd doesn't look very good to eat. It's all dried out. Remember that gourd. We're going to come back to it later. So right now, we're going to... I have everything I need to do the long version of getting past that giant scorpion. We're going to use this on the well and fill it up with water. Now when we come over here to the statue, there's some symbols on the ground. Hmm. We have the well, and then there's the bowl, and what looks like crying into the bowl, and then water from the well, and then corn in the open hand, and then drinking the water. So, um, I did use this on her at the very beginning because you have to use this on her at least once to make her cry so that you can use it on the bowl to make her cry for this part. <laughs> and we add the water that we got from the well. We add the corn to the open hand. Now when we take the water out, mm, fresh. There we go. And we're going to come back to the statue here in a bit. So first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go wander into the desert. Oh. Excuse me, sir. It's random what screen he's on. So I kind of lucked out. I got him there right away. <gasps> what? Do you want of me? I... Uh, I am Valenice of Daventry, good sir. I wonder if you might tell me where I am? You are far away from life. And love. And hope. You are surrounded by dust. And it is dust you shall become. You are so pale, Traveler. Are you... I lost my life in this cursed desert. Now I must wander, tormented by everlasting, burning thirst. 
Is there anything I can do? Leave this place if you can. The portal through the mountains, the mouth of the great stone head was closed by an evil enchantress. Legend says that it can be opened, but I know not how. Go, now. Sir! Go! This thirst drives me mad, and I know not what it will make me do. Okay, so we got a lot of great clues about what's going on there. Um, and the keyword there is thirst. So we did all of that with the water ahead of time. So we can hopefully... There's a very small window you have Sir. to click on him. Otherwise he walks off screen super fast. But if you talk to him too many times and you don't have the water... What uh, do you want? He will kill you. So we give him... Water. I wish to give this to you, traveler. Is it truly sweet water, lady? Could it really be? I really love whoever did his voice. <sighs> I thought my thirst would torture me forever. How can I thank you? Can you help me escape this desert? I do not know how to open the portal. But there is something I can do. Follow me. Now where he's leading us is an area we can get to without him. But we can't do a lot here. And you might as well just, if you're going to go this route, just wait until he brings you here anyway. Is... is that... Yes. That is all that remains of Colin Farwalker. The great adventurer. Me. Oh, I I'm so sorry. Don't be. Your gift of water has given me peace. We must hurry. I haven't much time left on this earthly plane. I wish to give you something. Okay, now we have the option. There is rope, and then there is this bottle. And we're going to take the bottle. I thank you, good sir. May it help you in your journeys, my lady. Farewell. Now, of the King's Quest games, uh, this one is probably the most lenient as far as giving you time to do things before you die, but it is very possible to die in this game. Um, there are a few decisions you can make that will kill you instantly. Some of them, if you don't react in time, like with the Scorpion, um, which actually we're going to go take care of the Scorpion now. So all of that we just did um, is so that we can take care of the Scorpion a different way. But it also gives us uh, some nice story, some back, you know, context. But then we also get to feel good because we, you know, helped out a wandering spirit in the desert. So, you know, if that's important to you. So before I go in there, so you can see, what I picked up was bug reducing powder. So when we go in here to deal with the scorpion. throw this at him. <laughs> and that's that. So that's the long way to do all of this. Um, so we're going to come over here and we're going to deal with this altar. And if we mouse over it, we see all these symbols. Um, turn this over. We get this beam of light. 
Now the solution to this, and um, I just remember what the solution is, but I don't remember offhand how you get there, but essentially the red one goes there, the yellow one goes there, and the blue one goes there. And we get a turquoise piece. Now this turquoise piece is uh, a required piece to complete the level. So we'll put that back, and now we're done. So, like I said, you can do either route to get that turquoise piece, um, but that's just one way to, to deal with it. Um, we're going to go over one screen, basically, and then we're going to go up one screen. Um, remember that gourd that was no good and dried out? If we go look at it now, how strange. The gourd split in the sun. It looks like there's a loose seed in there. Okay. So we're already almost done with this level. We're going to talk to our friend here of rare curiosities. Who can that be? I cannot see. I am Valenice of Daventry, good sir. Is there a problem with your eyes? But awful rotten jackalope swiped my glasses. I can't cope. Normally I'd trade with you, but since I'm blind, my day is through. Okay. <clears throat> so we need to deal with him. <laughs> but you know, watching him like this, you kind of realize what a jerk. Of all the rude, inconsiderate. <laughs> you realize what a jerk Bugs Bunny was, because that's basically a Bugs Bunny move right there. So to get him out, we're going to come over and we're going to take a look at the hole he just dived into. And the other thing I picked up in the desert next to that skeleton was a hunting horn. If we use that on the hole... Oh dear, the horn is clogged with sand. <sighs> and Here it try comes, you little fiend. I got you, didn't I? Okay. We're gonna get the jackalope fur that he just left on the cactus. And we're gonna pick up the glasses that he dropped. And then we're gonna go talk to our friend. This is all I have to say. Go away! Go away! Here you are. Oh joy! Oh joy! Oh happy me! I can see! I can see! Thanks to you, I'm not afraid. Now I'm free to deal and trade! Okay. Now every item we show him, he'll give us a different funny response. Uh, so... I'm going to start with the comb. The lovely lady shows me gold. How would you like some fine blue mold? No, thank you. I don't want to trade this. You see, it belongs to my daughter. Have you seen her? Hmm, a princess fair with golden hair? Yes. Have you seen my Rosella? Seen her, lady? Sadly, no, but I hear tales from winds that blow from far away, from the west, 
My sources are the very best. They tell me that the brave troll king has lost his heart and given a ring to a lovely princess he plans to wed. A foreign princess, it is said. A foreign princess? Well, that could be her. Do you know anything more? To find out more, you'll have to go beyond the woods and far below. Okay, so now we kind of know a little bit better what's happened to Princess Rosella. Let's show him the cloth. Pretty piece of silky cloth. Here, I'll go get my best dead moth. <laughs> Don't bother, please. What a skillful work of clay. I'll trade you a bale of moldy hay. No, thank you. Why, that's a simply smashing stick. How about a fat deer tick? Uh, 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 I mean, no thank you. Oh my, a stunning turquoise shape. Will you accept a shriveled grape? Oh, I don't think so. And this is actually the one that we want. What a lovely wrinkled seed. For that, I'll offer this blue bead. That sounds like a good deal. So that's actually the item we needed, but I'll show him a few other things. What a charming woven basket. Let me find my silk-lined casket. <laughs> no, that's all right. <sighs> a mighty horn of tarnished brass. Uh, would you take a box of broken glass? Ah, <laughs> uh, I think not. The jackalope fur gets a good response. Yuck! Fur from that horrid beast. I don't want it in the least. <laughs> a juicy, sticky, spiky fruit. Uh, would you like a chewed on boot? <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 thank you. The last one. Mmm, a tasty grain of salt. Hey, will you take a chocolate mold? Tempting, but no thank you. I'm trying to watch my figure. <laughs> okay. Well, we're all done with him. Um, if you get the bug powder, but you do the flag method that I showed you at the beginning to deal with the scorpion, and you keep the bug powder, there's no other use for it. You'll never use it anywhere else. But, um, he'll give you another response about the bug powder. I don't remember what it is, but it's, it's pretty clever. So, now to finish up the level, we're going to go back here to the well. Um, we have everything we need. And if you remember, I showed you, before we got the pot, um, we looked at a, a cave painting. And the cave painting was talking about this statue and this well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the head. And the head's going to turn. And then if we look at the neck, we see these beads. And if you remember, there was a symbol that had three blue dots and some lines. And all three dots were in line in the third column. So we'll put that there. And then... If we click the wrist, the bowl turns down. Now the well is empty. This is one of those moments where um, if you do the wrong thing, uh, you will have instant death. Um, so we have this idol. And take a look, he's holding a bowl. And we're going to look at the bowl. That looks like some kind of offering bowl. Now, if we just take one of these items, water rushes into the cavern and we drown. So we have to make an offering. So that's what the turquoise blue bead we just got is for. And we have to take one of these pieces. We already have an arrow-shaped piece like this. So we're going to take this one. And that's it. We're going to combine these two together to make the puzzle piece. And now we're going to leave. So 
I'm going to head towards the exit, and then I'm going to finish this episode. Next episode, we will deal with uh, Chapter 2, um, which is funny for all kinds of reasons. Um, Incredible! So I, I appreciate you guys sticking through, you know, with this. I'm going to take a look here, and that's where the puzzle piece goes to open up the game. But wait, what about those footprints? Alright, so that's where I'm going to end the episode. Thanks, guys. Um, and uh, tune in next episode. It's going to be fun.